All right, everyone, welcome in to our weekly Mayans MC review show. Um, Huge show today. Huge this show. one today has more telling facts about it than any other show. Um, the damn show's badass. I'm not uh, the show in general. I mean, business just picked up. Um, business just picked up. It's better than I ever thought it would be at this mm -hmm. point. And I'm not just saying that because we're doing this review show. If it was me sitting in my room at home, I'd think the same thing. The show is down straight up badass. Um, mm -hmm. It <clears throat> It's starting out way more intriguing than Suns did. Yeah, yeah, it did. You know, and, and we, we, we were doubtful about how much ground this thing was going to cover in, in the time that it has. <clears throat> you know, not going to lie, you know, some of, the, some of the episodes have been kind of slow go. You know, I mean, there's been a lot more things kind of kind of going with this show as they were Suns in, in the first season. But uh, tonight it really just picked up. Like, yeah. there's a huge thing. Next level started. stuff. Yeah, next level. So, right, going right into it, the show starts out, and again, there's some sort of animal. This time it's a roach, it's a cockroach. Um, you see one cockroach inside and then immediately crawling around on, on an envelope as EZ pulls it out and then you see another one outside that Angel actually picks up and holds and looks at it. So in the world of the underground world, any kind of gangster world, motorcycle crew world, uh, you know, mafia world, a cockroach is basically the lowest form of life there is. Yeah, lowest of low. <clears throat> and we finally get to see what that actually stands for in this show. This is more evident than yeah. More, you know, you get to see it clearly. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> might want to review back on some other episodes and kind of see what the, what that can play into. But this is pretty clear. Yeah, this one's pretty <clears throat> clear right off the bat. So, Angel, he actually goes in a room with Bishop and the other heads of the family, basically, or the heads of the family. <laughs> so used to mafia stuff. So, he actually goes in there with, like, Bishop and all the big dogs in with the minds in this chapter. And he tells them, uh, Angel walks in there and he actually tells them, you know, if he don't if he don't get this off his chest, he feels like he's being a rat. So he tells him of Riz's uh, tunnels that he's using, uh, just information to stay in the room. And what I honestly think it is, is Angel started having guilty feelings, and that he wants to. He kind of thinks that they may be on to what he's doing, and he thinks he'll win himself back with this. Yeah, try to get the try to get the heat off of his trail, and that and I think that was the big play on that one as well. <clears throat> you know, this guy's obviously not no no big guy in the MC, or in the MC. He's he's just trying to get um, trying he's to get sacrificing the heat off somebody to yeah. get the heat off himself. I yeah, think. all right, I agree with that. And then, but I don't think it's something where he feels that this is gonna. This may cost somebody a patch, but it's not gonna cost somebody their life. I mean, or whatever. It's gonna well, we'll know them. next. We'll episode. know next episode what this is gonna. Something cost bad's somebody. gonna happen. I think they're not real happy about it. Well, they did say he was moving women and kids though, so. Yeah. It may just be a scolding, but I still think it's a way for him to get in some brownie points, so to speak. Yeah. Now, Angel then walks out of the room, and you think he's feeling good, so he goes and says, all right, Prospect, it's time to go, and you think he's talking about his brother, and he is. Well, then it shows the Prospect's vest walking out, and as the mm -hmm. Prospect's vest is walking out, you know, he opens up, they get into a car, and it shows him and his brother, then they look in the back and tell him who's sitting in the back. Uh, that was, um, what was his name? Adelita. Adelita, yeah, yeah. She, 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 yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's, she's using to get out of there, so, you know, and she's already across the border, too, yep. you know, they already got her across the border, so it kind of makes, well, what is her play in this? You start thinking, you know, what is, what is she doing, you know, why is she across the state, so obviously, until we find out as it. later on as the show goes on, she's got a lot to play in this. In they this basically episode. used this prospect jacket to get, she mm -hmm. wore it to get out of mm -hmm. where they were. Now, then they tell EZ they're going to take him. Oh, can I have one? Thank you, water. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's Lord Partee. So, uh, so then they basically tell EZ he's going on a Reaper run. And we're all thinking, could this be... The Reaper run as we used to know it. And lo and behold, by God, there they were. Sons of Anarchy again. Sam Crow is there. Doing what they do best, running guns. At this time, it looked like Mac 10s or compact submachine guns um, that they were getting, or the old, you know, uh, some sort of submachine guns that they had. They actually carried them on a bike, so it wasn't like they was in this big duffel bags when they used to drop mm -hmm. it off and. 
in, in vans and stuff. But um, as they were there, Easy gets a call. And you find out he gets that call. He finds out that his whole deal with the cops is done. Done. It's done. So you know what that means. And they basically said you don't Chaos. want any, they don't any want hatch me. around with any cop show up anywhere because they're going to rat you out. That's what he was told. So um, before we get into that, um, they skip scenes and they go back. Um, the next thing you know is Adelita is sitting at Easy's dad's table. Um, with his mom's or well, his ex-wife's yeah his basically you know he's a told, they had told you know how you know a little bit about their father and about their uh, you know her dead mother uh, about their dead mother and everything and she just kind of just asked a few questions you know we don't really see how that's going to play in but you know just like you're about to say he they come in and what do they get yeah so she starts basically telling them she's there she's about to kill him and um, she finds out that he had ties to his dad, EZ's dad, right? So she's about to kill him, and he says, before you do that, you need to know the whole picture. And he gets up and shows her pictures that she had, and a picture, one picture in particular that she had that was torn that showed her dad and uh, Felipe, which is uh, uh, their dad. Well, So her father and uh, EZ's father, mm -hmm. they, 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 they have a past. So and, she had half, and, of that and it has a lot to do with the uh, with the cartel. And that half of that picture just showed him standing there. Well, he said, "Let's show you the other half of the picture." The bottom <clears> of the picture, they were sitting there with severed heads, where they had killed people for the cartel together. And basically, what he told her was, her father was a he wasn't the same that she thought he was. Yeah, he was a bad guy who killed, literally killed people for the cartel, and that. And that basically he got caught up in the wrong, they both got caught up in the wrong family and they did what they had to do to survive. So she, she realized that her dad wasn't a saint. And um, yeah, what the Glendo cartel did was awful, like hacking him up in front of him, but he wasn't a saint that she made him out to be either. You know, that's pretty apparent. Um, Give her a lot of different perspective of what, of what, what she was doing, of what she's been doing. And um, she found out that they have ties to the bishop that they talked about in an earlier episode. He knows all about this too, but he's been quiet about it. We find that out. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, so she found out. We basically she leaves there in tears. She came there to kill him, and she ends up leaving in tears and actually tells Felipe that she's sorry. She's like, "I'm mm -hmm. sorry. You know, I didn't." You know, I, I got all this wrong. And it, and she goes, you know, she basically left. She took that one picture mm -hmm. for proof that... Um, that About that bishop. bishop. Yep. Yeah, it gives, her, it gives her an idea of who actually did betray her father. Um, and that could be another layer that we, maybe we get into a lot, a lot deeper as we go along. So, um, yeah, and here's something else that's crazy. You don't find this out later. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. I don't even want to spoil it yet. But let's go back to the Reaper Run. All right, they're leaving the Reaper Run. Why in the middle of the Reaper Run, remember we said he found out that the deal's been pulled. Kevin Jimenez uh, calls and tells him, uh, Kevin's that his name? Yeah, I believe it's Kevin. Kevin. I think it is Kevin. And uh, yeah, he, he lets yeah, him know, hey, you know. He finds out the deal's been pulled. Yeah, this, is, this deal's been pulled. You better, you know, watch your back. As soon as they leave this 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 Reaper run and they're going back, um, obviously the cops are on to them. They see them and uh, they pull the entire club. Uh, you know the Reaper run. They they pull the club over, and uh, so he's thinking, "Hey, I'm done." Once the club finds out, I'm done. Because he told him specifically, "Don't be around any cops and patches together." Yeah. Because they will spill the beans on you and let them kill you. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this guy's stuck between a complete rock and a hard place. So not not a Johnny Rambo. He does. This guy doesn't have... They get pulled over. He's going to spray the truck. entire show anyway, but this is makes it even worse. Yeah, they get pulled over by state police, and there's two or three cop cars, and they come out guns drawn, and that mug rides up to them, like Adam, and the rest of the crew's in front of him, and he says, are y'all looking for Easy uh, Reyes? And then he just guns it right by him and kicks their down cop door shut and just takes Hall's ass the other way. He pulls that Jack Spiller pull on him. Just, just pulls the cops with him. Yeah, just take the cops away from the scene. That's that's something we've seen in the past. It's a, 
it's definitely work. So uh, yeah, it takes it takes off. Next thing they get is after they finally catch him, you know, they pretty much beat him. You know, they that, that, they beat him for uh, after they pull him over. Beat him, damn, beat the shit out of him. They said yeah. stop resisting. He's just sitting there. Of course, they beat him. Mm -hmm. um, our opinions more attack on police, a liberal Hollywood attack on police. But, yeah, but I mean it does happen exactly. from time to time. Um, so then it swaps to a scene that shows Galindo in prison with this guy who had been bullying people in his cell. This big muscled up, roided up, tattooed guy walks over there and pissing in a bottle, trying to basically you know, talking shit to him. Yeah, basically talking shit. Don't even know if he knows who this guy even is. And he and he really don't know how bad. He said, "Me and my friends think you're a big shot." Yeah. So this dude wants to come put it to a test, and Galindo basically calls him worthless, brainless cockroach. Power cockroach shirt. once again. And, he, and the guy's basically telling him he's going to take his shirt off because he's wanting his shirt or something. So he takes his shirt off, and all of a sudden, he punches the guy in the gut. When he leans down, he rips the shirt around his neck and puts it on his back. So they're laying back to back, and Galindo is just choking the life out of this dude. Literally choking Honestly, life. Galindo's pretty good. He's a survivor, man. Yeah, he's, no, he's, he's, his hands. he's using his hands in this one, man. Uh -huh. I gave him credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, and ends up killing the dude. Yeah. And then jumps up kind of uh, a la Achilles and Troy and asks anybody else if they wanted some. Mm -hmm. Is there no one else? <laughs> he Is did. There no one he else? definitely called him out. I was like, damn. What we find out in that scene, obviously someone's listening. Yep, somebody so, was listening. We'll get to that in one second. So then the, the show shifts and it shifts to Coco dropping his daughter off at his mom's. Which Basically, before the Reaper run, he lets them know that this is his daughter. Yep, Finally spills is. the beans about this being his daughter. He's like, this is my daughter. And he introduces her and everybody's like, welcomes her in. Many layers of this show. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot to cover today. So then Coco goes to his mom's and he's like, hey, you're going to be safe here until we can find you a place to get you on your feet. And his mom acts sort of like a pile of shit a little bit while he's there. And when he leaves, instantly starts boiling her bullying her takes the money that coco just gave her take, yeah he gives her a lot, a lot of money takes that money and t basically tells her to go sell herself in the streets while it's still tight was her mm -hmm. exact words mm -hmm. and what a piece of shit that is she's just training her own granddaughter to be what she to be is. a prostitute yeah now mike what happens in the bathroom i'm gonna let you explain that when she's sitting in there by the commode uh as we're going on you know well <clears throat> so when i get back uh, the, the club's starting to get back and um, everyone's kind of getting back to the clubhouse, and all of a sudden, you know, a truck pulls up. Uh, uh, our homeboy gets out with the, the car, with um, gets out. <laughs> What's she called? <laughs> Master Jacker? Yeah, I can't, it was something funny. I was trying to think of it, but they get out, and she's obviously has, um, she went into the bathroom before she arrives there and starts beating herself up. She's hitting that uh, liar, liar, her man. She's beating herself commode, on things. Busting her head up. Busting her head on the commode. And she just, uh, she shows up and she's brutally beaten up by things which she done herself. Wait before you get there. We got to cover some other stuff before she shows back up over mm -hmm. here. All right. So then, okay. I can't remember the black officer's name. It was in with Jimenez, uh, Kevin Jimenez. He's a poor man's 50 cent. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but... He goes over there where, where Potter is, and the DEA has this whole room set up, just like they did in Sons. They got them all up on the board, and they got they have been on to them. Yeah, they have been on to them for a while. So he comes in there, and he can't remember the code to get in the room, so they let him in. And then Potter, oh, is it Potter or Porter? It's Potter. Potter. So Potter goes making fun of him because he can't remember five digits. So then. They're, they're in there talking, and they're about to, you know, be done talking. And then Kevin Jimenez busts in there, the guy who basically called EZ and told him that the deal's off. He's not supposed to tell him, but he tells him. He busts in there and says, hey, man, I've been on this case two years. They've got Galindo detained right now. He's detained in Mexico. You can go check any sources you want, any phone calls, any 
warehouse anything, you'll see inactivity for X amount of time. And this is supposed to be law enforcement down here, so and obviously they're not aware of what's going on, so they don't have any idea that that Glenda's detained at this point. And then that guy somehow gets on his computer and checks and says, mm -hmm. "Yep, no phone calls, no this, that, and other." It gives some legitimacy, and then Potter looks at the poor man's fifty cent and goes, "Hey man, the deal's back on until other." further notice, that let's give this guy a shot with what he's saying is true. Which I think led to the end of the show. Obviously. Yes, they, you know, they know that it's not them, but you know, like we said, there's a lot of layers, so who is it? Now, we find out by the end. I'm gonna let Mark explain this next part. So then, this cop comes and gets Galindo out of a jail cell. And you're like, and no lie, and I'm not just joking when I say this. As they're walking down the steps, Mike goes, I don't know, what's going on here? And I said, well, you know, I don't think they got any kind of pulled in here in Mexico like this. Well, I'll be damned. I said, yeah. As soon as I say that. <laughs> uh, we're in debate. So tell, tell them what happened as soon as it happened. Soon as, soon as the, I said, man, I think, I think they're about to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking kind of what had happened. And uh, because, I mean, it's always been, it's kind of a theory because they said that they've got thousands behind the scenes. They, they got a lot of people working for them. As soon as he walks down, she turns the corner. I don't need that. Adelita. Adelita turns around the corner and pretty much reveals herself to Galindo and uh, just you know you don't really know what kind of play this is going to be if she's just trying to show you know her set of balls or what you don't know what this is going to be so um, it's basically just a conversation that she explains the entire the entire idea of what they're doing this entire rebellion and why they're doing it you would think that it's because they're trying to kill the devil, which is what they've said all along. But basically, and this is the big cat out of the bag, it's basically to join yep. and to to be able to tame the greater the greater evil. Instead of once they take, if they was to take him down, then they go and they, they another, there's another one. It takes a place, kind of like um, your, your homies that uh, cat that with Captain America, man. They're um, uh. Take Chop off one head and another one takes his place. Another one takes his place. And in real life, this actually happened. What she's saying happened. Um, Pablo Escobar was a product of that. Um, and th this is a true story. Um, Pablo Escobar was a low rent, he was a low rent member of the family. And mm -hmm. he went and was an informant and busted several different families. Yeah. And the government actually put Pablo Escobar into power so they could monitor just this one family instead of having to deal with 12 families. Mm -hmm. So, or to get a picture of that. But we all went, um, so that actually happened in real life. So basically mm -hmm. what she's saying, if we get rid of you, this is going to be another you right behind you. So, yeah. um, Mike, tell them what ended up happening there. So basically she just wanted to make a deal that, you know, that we're going to be able to, uh, we need to work with you. Um, so she's so of course you can kind of tell if he's trying to get like if he's going to, he's still trying to debate if he's going to do this which that's you kind can of tell his wheels was turning yeah his wheels was turning but I think he's also taking names too we we talked a little bit about that but just as a, uh, a, a he actually know, said officers names yeah show of faith they bring down his child and uh, and and give the you know give his his, uh, his child back um, one thing she said it was cool. She said, vengeance is a, is a match. A fire is much more complicated. I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's deep, man. It definitely hits home with him. And I think you can understand that he's going to have to play a little bit of ball with these guys because, uh, you know, he's going to have to work with them or he's going to have to really burn the whole thing down. And I think once she showed that he had, she had all of his refineries, um, all of his fields, everybody, everything right there at, the, at, the, at their fingertips, I think he knew that he was playing with, with he wasn't playing with just a small gang here. Yeah, because she showed four at first, and she blew those four up, and he just laughed. She mm -hmm. hit another screen, and it went out to pop about 35 different mm -hmm. places. Now, her exact words was, I want to be the eyes, ears, and weapons of it. And then once, he's like, well, what do you get out of it? And she says, uh, we're going to use that money for good to help people. To take care of our, our people. The people who need it. So she's asking him pretty much the people that he is, which is the whole base of the show, all these people he thinks are cockroaches to to help rebuild Mexico, to right. give them what they need, the people. Um, so you, you kind of was this show is kind of always shown. You know, he you can kind of tell that he's got some kind of caring side, a family side to him. Um, but how much of that he allows to come out is another thing. 
So that's what we're kind of playing is what kind of man is he? You know, that's one thing that I think is another layer of the show is you've got EZ who is, you see so many different layers of him and, and is he a bad guy, is he a good guy, is he a rat or is he not a rat? You get to see the same, you get to see a different kind of scenario with Galindo. Is he a man that loves his family and cares about his, 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 uh, his child and his wife and or does he care more about his legacy and what he has to leave and how to, does he want to be feared or does he want to be respected? A lot of different layers in the show that we're getting to see a lot more and, and we'll get to get a little bit clearer picture of each of them, I think, as we go along. Um, I think that there's no way he's just going <laughs> to... Something's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, th I think that, you know, something like that, I, my opinion is I think it leads him to he's still... Uh, no matter what, this, it wouldn't be a story if he went down the good path. If everybody went down the right path, this would not be a story whatsoever. So, then the show... They leave that scene. Then the show jumps to EZ shows back up to the mine's warehouse where he's greeted by Bishop. And Bishop just crawls his ass, dude. He's like, he basically says, don't ever do no more of that Rambo shit, mm -hmm. this rogue bullshit without our approval. Don't you ever do that. That's first of all, it's how you get killed or that's basically how you turn right because you get captured. Mm -hmm. And, um, you can tell Bishop. I can tell you right now, Bishop don't like EZ. He yeah. don't like him. He is something. He can. He's. I think he smells something on him. He don't like. I think and he, he senses told, there that he's got a little hand in something else or something. There's something not right. He him. even told his brother and two others, "How much longer has this guy got?" And he said, eight months." He said, "I got a feeling it's gonna be a long eight months." Mm -hmm. Bishop is starting to remind me a little bit of Clay, though. Yeah, because. He has a little bit of snakeism to him. Yeah. I, he don't seem like a true blood. Like somebody like Chibs, you could sense genuine in the last, uh, in Sons. Uh, also somebody like uh, Opie, you could sense was genuine. And uh, Tig, you could sense was genuine. I don't sense genuine in Bishop. I, I sense he's a little, I could easily see him have his hand in other places too. I mean, I, yeah. I, I just something. We were saying that obviously that was a story of how Sons even ended. Is that obviously that that gavel was a lot of weight. Yeah, that's I tell you so another thing. You never, you never get to say that story. I tell you another thing though. This show makes you pull for people like that. It makes you pull for Coco and Angel and EZ, the people doing rogue shit. Where if we had seen that on Sons, we'd have been like, get these rat bastards out of here, kill them. Yeah. This show makes you pull for them. Yeah, Which you know what? Yeah, because it gives, it also gives you a little bit uh, of an angle of their story. Where in Sons, we didn't, we didn't get as much of a story. We didn't really get so much of their story. Um, um, that their backstory. So now, two more things. We're dropping it. We're gonna hit these real fast. Um, Angel, you know, Angel basically told Bishop early in the show about the hidden tunnels. Where uh, Riz. Riz? Yeah, Riz. Riz? Riz. I think it was Riz. It was used in these secret tunnels. And so as Riz is coming up out of one of these tunnels, you see Bishop, Angel, and two other guys just standing there with flashlights waiting on them. Mm -hmm. So now you're like, okay, Angel's back in with their good graces. His his little plan worked to get this, you know, these tunnels talked about. So he's gaining brandy points with Bishop. Cuts that scene. Next scene. It shows Galindo makes it home with his baby. You're like, okay, finally, man. He's been chasing his baby this whole season. Mm -hmm. You're like, damn, they're getting to settle in. Just like that, the power goes out, I'm thinking. I'm saying, uh -oh. thinking, surely they're not coming up here to kill them. Mm -hmm. You know, like the resistance that quick or something. was like, no way. Come to find out, the damn door the opens up and Potter's standing there. And the feds have them all lined up. And he's doing his typical weird shit, mm -hmm. reaching for her baby. He's just, you know, he's just, dude's just such a weird creep, guy. Dude. Such a weird I guy. I don't think you get a better guy to play such a creep role. And it goes off. So, but to backtrack before we end, Coco. Mm. We go back in with yeah, Coco. We get that. <clears throat> right, before uh, that right before this scene had, had happened. Coco comes in because he's highly pissed off because, you know, she shows up at the clubhouse. His daughter his daughter shows up. The hell beat out of her. Shows up, beat up, and pretty much basically tells Coco, hey, look, you're, you know, your mom done it. Well, EZ actually had gotten back. Tells him that 
pretty much his mother has beat her up really bad. And she's upset about it. Well, of course, Coco jumps on the bike, takes off straight over there. You don't know what's going to go down, but she's in a tub. Dude, Dude kicks down the door, and uh, it, it ain't even a haymaker. He hits her straight in the face. He's a straight jab. Dude. No, it's a roundhouse. He bro. hits her. He hits her right in the face. He hits her so bad it bits pop, comes up off the ground just about. Falls straight back in the tub, and she uh, tells him she's about to ruin his ass. And yeah, she's about to her. ride him out because which is her biggest threat. So that's what happened. Tell us how he her and literally puts her underwater, and is choking his own mother. Gave birth to him underwater to the point where she actually dies, and then he sits back. You know, her blood splattered where he knocked her teeth out. And um, typical Kurt Sutter, though. I mean, mm -hmm. like, graphic, realistic. I mean, he's like, this dude just killed his own mom. And he just kind of sits back. You can tell it kind of bothered him. But you can tell it's kind of relief, too, because she was about to rat him out to the feds or the police, and mm -hmm. his ass is gone. Yeah. Because he's already got a track Well, obviously, she's, you know. You know, she's, she's a bad person. You know, she's over there trying to, uh, she's, she's prostituting shit. herself. She's... She's talking about his daughter, you know, trying to get her own grandchild to prostitute. And, and, and it goes mind he beat his daughter's ass, but she really did. Yeah. But she did beat, treat her like shit. Yeah. And then, you know, she's just a bad person all around, obviously, the way that she's now, treated him regardless. So we've got a lot of layers in this show. This, this show is a That's what I'm saying. Like, these reviews, we try to keep them as short as possible, but they run long because there's just so much shit you got to talk about. Just like that one part right there. I missed that whole part. In my notes, we always jot down notes, and then we come in here and discuss off my notes. I missed that one part. A notes. lot to cover, man. But uh, you know, that's the thing is we want to, we want to be able to cover these things so you guys can can get an understanding of what we're seeing, and we want to know what you guys are seeing. Yeah, please comment. Uh, you guys have been doing great comment, and we check the numbers. You know, our channel's literally only been up like three and a half months now. Um, we haven't been up and running that long, but you know, we did the numbers on our Minds MC review the other day. We're just under, when you count all the shows, we're just under 10,000 views. So you guys are watching, and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you for Please that. Comment. Please comment. We're going to keep coming. Share. There's other shows that we're going to be doing reviews on. This was our first test run, and to have that much response, we're not ever going to stop doing these. Guys, please comment below your thoughts on it, and if you think it's going in a different direction, let us know. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for the notifications. This is Minds MC Review. We're out.